What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Spectator Mode Podcast. Hey, guys, you like how I skipped two and three completely? Yeah. <laughs> welcome back, folks. This is a uh, makeup of last week's podcast due to some technical issues, so we're using something completely different, and hopefully things won't break. As always, I'm joined with Carl May Smart, who is down in Australia and being cooked alive. Aren't you, buddy? Yeah, we're getting there. We're, we're, we're burning up slowly. And, of course, we've got Matthew Get Silius Paul joining us as well. What's up, Matt? Hey, how's it going? Doing good. Matt? You're doing good. Hey, yeah. guys, you know what? You know there's this whole thing going on with GameStop and stocks, and Matt happens to know a lot about stocks. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that later on. It should be interesting for those who don't know any, anything about stocks, like myself. I'm completely ignorant. So yeah. there's that. But as always, every Spectator Mode podcast, unless it's a special edition, we talk about the games that we played this week. And Matt, you're up. You're first. So yeah, Go for birth- yeah. So on my birthday, that was this week. I uh, played. I just decided to 100% Dark Siders one on Apocalyptic just as a ritual. Uh, good, game. A good game. Yeah, I beat Dark Siders one. Just playing through Dark Siders two. I played. A l- I played um, Going Under. Really fun roguelike. I played another game of NDA Under. So I can't talk about that. The same game NDA Under. And I played, um, what you call it, Ancient Abyss. That was a really good game. Just playing a lot of roguelikes and uh, Darksiders, essentially. All right, cool enough. Mace, what about you, man? Uh, as we were recording last time, I was uh, saying that I'm trying to beat my world of Warcraft addiction and try and finally get and off you that failed. crap. You failed. I saw uh, you. Uh, yeah, I've logged in a couple of times. I haven't actually done anything, but I've logged in a couple of times. Um, but I have tried playing Final Fantasy fourteen and giving that a go as something to sort of replace that addiction with another addiction because you know, gaming is an addiction, I guess. But um, I've mainly been uh, playing the follow-up to um, Superhot, which, was, which is Mind Control Delete. Which has been quite an interesting little romp, and I, I, I enjoy that game because it's a very unique mechanics where time doesn't move unless you're moving, so it gives you time to sort of plan things out and have more reactionary time than most other games. Uh, I've been playing my way through that. It gives you a lot of modifiers and that to your games as you go through each level. Very enjoyable. I highly recommend if you haven't played it to give it a go, especially if you've an, an Xbox Game Pass user because it's on there, so you get to play it for whatever you're paying in the Xbox Game Pass fees. So we talked about this the other day, and I actually do have a copy of Super Hot that I've never played. I have it, but never played it. So maybe I should. Yes, you should. You most definitely I, should I, play I, it. I definitely will. I will. I definitely will. And since I'm up, um, honestly, I haven't been doing much this week. I've been playing Cyber Shadow, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, also, Hero the Skull Slayer, which we'll also talk about. Oh, and I'm back game. on my VR exercise kick because I got a replacement for my Rift S. So every other night I do a combination of um, box VR or um, beat. What is it? What is it? Power Beat VR, which you mean the Beat Saber my one. Butt. I do not play Beat Saber. This other one is a lot better. It's not about music. It's more basically about making me sweat and making my heart pound. So it sounds like it's about to pop out of my chest. And it's really good. It's really good. I'm getting a really good exercise because you would think, even though it doesn't have any weights or anything, but it's the repetitions and it makes you squat. It makes you move your body in certain ways. It's really good. I'm enjoying it because it's a good workout. And I feel like crap when I'm done, like 40, 50 minutes a segment or a session. But yeah, nice. yeah, it definitely does. It does a body good. Get on that VR exercise, people. Don't think it's a gimmick. It is not. We said the same Especially thing about the switch. We said the thing about the Wii, so I don't know. No, this is this is actually really good. If if anybody was to jump into VR solely for exercise, I this is where I would say buy the Quest or the Quest Two just for that, because those are perfect exercise um, apparatuses, machines, utilities, perfect for this. Hey, your heater's back. But all right, so um, <laughs> I did mention that we're going to talk about Cyber Shadow and Skull of the Hero Slayer. So I've been playing these two games. Did not review them. I probably will do a review of Cyber Shadow. How we're going to do this real quick is basically mini review. So first up is Cyber Shadow, and I've been talking to people about this game for a while before it came out, and I kept telling people it reminded me of Ninja Gaiden off of the Nintendo Entertainment System, not the arcade, and it also reminded me of a game from back in the day called Shadow of the Ninja from Natsume. Basically, a game created by Yacht Clubs, and um, people know them from Shovel Knight. Game is not it's not overly complex. It's very simplistic. It looks like an old 8-bit game. Uh, and I found it mildly enjoyable. I do have some issues with the, some of the designs. 
mainly when an enemy hits you, you go flying backwards. And if you're like near a pit or something, you just will instantaneously die. There are other segments where the game can just be overly cheap and screw you so many different ways. You just you just put the controller down. I've I've had that happen so many times where one enemy appear, there's another enemy appear on top of enemy, and before you know it, you're you're down half a life, and you're like, you know what? It's not working. I'm done. The game also has some very suspect checkpoint system in place where if you hit the checkpoint and you've run through a level, there's no other one there. So you pretty much run through the entire level, and if you mess up and die, you're back to the beginning of the game or wherever that checkpoint was. It varies from stage to stage. Um, there's also times where a checkpoint is right next to the boss, which makes boss runs a lot easier, especially if you're trying to do a feat, which is basically an achievement tied into a, an, an achievement in the game. So basically the game will go, hey, you beat this feat, but then you'll get something to pop up on a PlayStation or, or Xbox that says, hey, you've done this as well. I've done... I've done like three boss runs for a combination of 30 minutes a piece just trying to get these feats down. They are not fun, but they're so good when you finally get them. Uh, music is cool. Music is very catchy. Graphics, I mean, it looks like an 8-bit game. People are still doing this whole pixelated art, and it's not a bad thing, but I, I feel it's a bit that overplayed. it's overdone. Yeah, it's, it's overdone. Too many people are doing it. I feel like it depends how good the sprites are doing it, but it's it's one of the indie aspect thing. I mean... You can't expect Jock Club Games to get out of sprite work. I mean, they made Shovel Knight, and they made so yeah, many add-ons to Shovel Knight. So, yeah, that's their thing. Uh, I mean, like if if you just saw the game and you didn't know what it was, if I put it on the TV and I was like, "What is this?" You would go, "I don't know what this is." It doesn't look like a new game. It's not something you would play next gen. I mean, as you said and as I alluded to, the whole eight bit pixel art is it's way overused. It's too many people are doing it. And I don't have a problem with that, but it's like, all right, guys, do something different. That said, there's an upcoming game called Bushido then or Bushiden. Yeah. That looks like a 16 bit game, kind of like a 16 bit, 32 bit game. I'm waiting for that. That one I'm excited for. Uh, Cyber Shadow, um, it's, it's not bad, but it's not for everybody. It definitely appeals to those who are fans of retro games. I've also heard a lot of people talk about the game saying that it's hard. And I'm just saying this it's, this game is just as difficult as an old school Mega Man game or a Castlevania game, or a Ninja Gaiden from back in the day. I, I did not find this game hard. I found it cheap, but not hard. The bosses are a freaking joke. They all have a pattern that you can easily exploit once you sit there and give enough time. It's that's not a hard game. That's the way I look at it. I also think the problem is that I'm disappointed in some of the design choices in the game, as you described, like um, bad checkpoint systems. You guys made Shovel Knight. It should not have been a problem for you. You should have made at least fair checkpoint systems. I think they just want to try something new. And I, I'm not going to say that the, the checkpoint system isn't fair. It, it just feels very inconsistent. That's all. Yeah. Like a good example is um, stage two. Stage two, you start out, you get the checkpoint. You can get almost through the entire level and you die. Start right back from the beginning. Sorry. And I can see that just disappointing people completely. Myself, it's like, again, I grew up in the days of NES where that happened. And I think this was just a throwback to those games of, of yesteryear where, hey, if you died in the middle of the stage or towards the end of the stage, guess what? You start over again. I mean, Super Mario did the same thing. You died. You started right back in the beginning. Mega Man, you died right back where you were. So I think a lot of that problem is, is people were like, you know what? I'm used to checkpoint in the, at the middle of the stage. Like a good example would be um, Panzer Paladin. Yeah. Panzer Paladin, you had checkpoints everywhere, and you could choose to take advantage of that checkpoint, or you could just ignore it. It's up yeah. to you. For the for um, you got the if you wanted the checkpoint in that game, you had to use one of your weapons. You sacrifice the weapon to get a checkpoint. And this again, going back to Cyber Shadow, it's just I think it's just a throwback to the games of back in the day. It's not bad. It's just people just aren't used to it. But again, other than that, and the the the, uh, the knockbacks from enemies. The game is pretty decent. I I don't have an issue with it. I'm I'm really enjoying it because again I pl I love games like that. Carl says I have an issue with games that are overly complex or hard because that's just how I am. You know, you know I, I do status. play Dark Souls and on board, so I like the game. I I would recommend it if you like games that have a little bit of a challenge, and you don't mind the pixel art and you like retro games. Definitely check it out. Now this other game, Skull the Hero Slayer. Oh boy. Uh, I have problems with this game. This game is not good, in my opinion. But I, I played in early access. But tell me how you feel about it. So starting off, the game starts off like a, a random regular game. No big deal, right? But then it 
you quickly notice the roguelike elements in this game. You die, you go back to being in the game, but you uh, you accrued uh, some premium, currency. That you, yeah, you, premium currency. Yeah, currency that you can use on this skill tree that is not very good to upgrade, like your level or your attack power or your magic or get extra life, whatever. So it's a it's a skill tree that I think is too demanding, and it doesn't give you a very positive, decent way to actually upgrade your character. But that's fine. I I can deal with that. But I also but, that's the thing, right? that's the thing that I hate it because it's like it feels like it's it's trying to be a rogue like, but it's really a rogue light, and there's a difference between the two, and it insults you. It's like, what's the point of premium currency to unlock things? But not even not even that. I mean, you you accrue money throughout the level. Okay, great. But then you can use that money in certain shops. But you're at the point where the shops are they're completely random. And again, I get that. You get to the shop and okay, this is there. Now you get back to it again. Oh wait, the items have changed up again. Oh wait, this NPC's not here now. But I was of course that's NPC the whole point. He has a whole point. He's not run. there. Right. And then go back again. And, oh, he's there, but I got no freaking money. Or my favorite is the game is based around you finding different helmets on the ground or right. given to you. But these helmets or skulls, or whatever you want to call them, one they're random. They're completely random. And they can make or break a run. I've had several crappy runs where I've got nothing but garbage chair helmets. That yeah, you got like the, the bone food. archer. Yes, crap like that. I know, I know. Or, or the knight that has, the, you can do the charge attack, but his regular attack is slow. And it's like, I, I can't do anything with this. What do you want me to do with this guy? Exactly. Or, it's so bad that you just end up using your default skills more than yeah, this. Yeah. yeah, I know. that. That's well, why, well, that's, yeah, that's why I hate that game. Like, what's the, like a lot of the ass like, doesn't do anything. Unless you, it, what it, really makes me mad, though, what really, really makes me mad, and I'm pretty sure it makes you mad, too, is the helmets are random, but the skills you get with the helmets are random. For yes. example, you can get the helmet with the same archer, same archer, same name and everything, but its special ability is changed. It's like, wait, yeah. what? You Okay, I can understand that the helmet I get are random. That's fine. But when you change the special or the way the helmet works, it's random on top of random. It's like, what? I, I don't understand this. There's been so many times I've got like the the, the tree helmet. I'm like, all right, a hel- the uh, skull. I'm like, all right, this one's pretty good. This special is good. And then I go and I do the special. It's like, wait, this is not what I remember it was. What the hell just happened? I look at it. Wait, that's not even the same ability. Why did it change? Yeah. So the RNG system screws you in so many different ways. The procedure generation, because I have a lot of issues with levels where they have spikes on top of a bouncy thing yeah. that. An enemy is right yeah. there and hits you right into the spikes. And it's like, what the hell? How much? But okay, so there's that. Then you got the random helmets, which again, I get that. It's fine. You want to switch up the game. That's fine. But then you change up my abilities on the helmets. Right. And the worst part about it is that if you, if, like, there's some times where you, if you get further down after you beat the tree boss, second boss, is some, some bosses or enemies, something we get certain what, uh, helmet or skull types. So at one point, the only time I ever well, I was playing early access, the only time I ever truly beat the full room of the game is that I had a legendary, I had a legendary necromancer helmet. That was the only time. It's just, it's just like, what the hell? It's the opposite of Hades or other roguelike games that are good I could recommend to you. It's like, no, they don't do this. This doesn't make sense. Yeah, and I, and I try to enjoy it. You know, I, I go back and play it every so often because I'm like, you know what? I'm going to beat this game. This game is not going to beat me. Mm. But the more I play it, the more I get frustrated. I will do. I will say this. They do have a nice uh, guest appearance from the hero from Dead Cells in there. Yeah, yeah, I, I was know. quite surprised when he was in there because that one is OP as hell. Yeah. But it's, we rarely get that one. Really? Yeah, it, it, you just, you just, it just feels like dice rolls to the skill. And the thing is that the yeah. de- the default ability of your character is so weak, and it costs so much to upgrade them. It's like I'm just, I'm just roll lucky. I'm just trying to get as much life or try to up- upgrade my chances of getting items. Just like what the hell? Yeah, I, I, uh, I really wanted to like the game. Um, yeah, it's it's not my cup of tea. I do like rogue likes and roll lights, but this one is not my jam. I I can't recommend this game just because the RNG is just. The RNG wrecks your game. Yeah, it's more too so much. than anything else. It's too much. It's okay. way too freaking much. I'm not yeah. a fan of it. Sorry. Like, and I think it's like the upgrades feel so slow. It's it's a critique I have for a lot of roguelike game, roguelike games out right now that they copied their progression system similar to Dead Cells, but unlike Dead Cells, Dead Cells has a good drop rate of getting items you want. You kind of don't in these other games, such as like I could talk about West of Dead and Skull. Uh, Skull Slay has the same problem, so it's like. I feel grinding for nothing for nothing's sake. Like you're 
it, it's it's like you're trying, it does the balance wrong where in a rogue light your skills carry you in a rogue like progression is based on how much you die or how better you get by items you equip so by not getting the, by the game limiting the items you get, you're just dice rolling with your base abilities. And as you're learning, your base abilities are not good enough or not consistent enough to beat some more powerful enemies. So it yes. feels like a fucking joke. When, you're, when your it, progression it, it, is it, 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 it actually the is bad. It actually sounds like you guys are describing something that's done really bad, like World of Warcraft. Where, well, where, your, really? progression, where, where your progression is based on gear and gear is not dropping. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially, yeah, that is it. That is it. The thing about this game, Mace, is you could have your skill tree maxed the hell out, but if you keep getting bad helmets, you're not going anywhere. Right. You won't even beat. You won't even beat the the standard cannon fodder enemies. You're. It is so heavily dependent on you getting a good roll. That again, the again you're you're, you're, game, you're sounding like nothing that I haven't heard since the release of. Uh, World of Warcraft Shadowlands in regards to like gear drops and you know RN, bad RNG for the loot and you know your progression basically grinding to a halt because you're not getting what you need. Right. And your base skills aren't good enough, which is that's just a horrible game. That's like, why? Why? I'm not good at like what? I'm sad to say that if that's the case <clears throat> in Warcraft, I don't know. I haven't played Warcraft in, you know, quite a long time, so I, I don't have any um, and I can't. I can't say anything about that. How about that? I can't say jack about that. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. So yeah, I I don't. I'm screwing up my mic here. So if I drop out, sorry. I I do not recommend this game. I've seen a lot of reviews saying this game is great, and I read the reviews and go, "What you don't even talk about the bad stuff in this game? This game has a lot of things that it does wrong." Please because maybe that. because maybe they got like, oh man, I got like my first six runs really lucky, like the dopamine. Oh, I keep playing it, my lucky run. It's like it's the opposite of other games. So it's like maybe those guys got good lucky runs. Maybe they unlock you know, like the necromancer and beat the boss, so they got death. You know, the, the really good ones. I can't believe that somebody would get perfect or damn good rolls every time they play this game. I simply cannot imagine that. And oh, if you did, unless you're, cheat, unless you're using, you know, cheats and seed runs and all. I mean, if you are, if you're, if you're that lucky, then goddamn, you should play the lottery. Because yeah. other than that, no, I've beaten this horse enough. I'm not going to dog this game anymore. Again, I really liked it. I really liked. I really tried to like the game. Give it a try if you want. I'm not here to tell you to play a game or not to play a game, but just be prepared to be disappointed if you're going expecting to be a. A worthwhile rogue like experience. I think you will like if you if you want something easier in your mind. I think you would honestly de stress play going under. I love going under. It's fun. Well, you know me. I don't I don't mind games that give me a challenge. I love games that give me a challenge. I just want games to be practical or fair. Yeah, yeah. Not not so heavily dependent on RNG. That's what. Oh, that's what really pissed me off. Yeah, and I feel like a lot some some roguelikes kind of depend on that. At least the bad, in my opinion, the bad ones do. Because it doesn't, you're just grinding for grinding's sake. Because it's like, again, unless your your base skills of the game are that strong, you have to worry about it. Like in Hades, in Hades, your base skills, your your dash, bloodshot, and your special attack is strong enough for you to do it. There's nothing to worry about. Then you don't have to worry so be so dependent on getting good uh, boons or good effect from gods or whatever trials. So it's like, yeah, even if I roll Aphrodite, who I might be not that weak, like six times in a row, I can still win with Aphrodite. It's not that bad. I'd rather Poseidon boss myself, but that's just me. No, no, no. Aphrodite is considered the weak ones. Poseidon's great. I'm going to talk about the weaker. Her. Like uh, my, she's not the weakest, but you could argue, you know, she's down there. All right. So, like I said, I'm not going to beat this dead horse anymore. I just don't recommend the game. But there's that. All right. Um, actually, I wanted to just touch on something real quick, uh, Matt. I know that you were a fan of. Um, now my brain has gone blank. Uh, what was that forum for? Brawler game for the Xbox Ninja Theory. God, what was the name of that game? Bleeding Edge. Yeah, Bleeding Edge. They're, yeah, they're not doing any more updates anymore. I just saw that while we yeah, were talking. Yeah, that was real quick. Yep, they just yeah. focus on something else. Yeah, that game is dead. I feel bad. That yeah, is yeah. that is terrible. The netcode really killed that game. That's what killed this. The netcode. So. Uh, the netcode and the fact that it was exclusive to the Xbox, which wasn't really a smart thing to do, in my opinion. Yeah, just it had good bones, that a good foundation. It just they couldn't capitalize, and yeah, and there's other games out there that does what it does and better. Basically, so yeah, 
shame. It's a shame. I just wanted to wanted to point that out real quick before we continue. Um, so we do have a couple of things we want to get to, but I, I, you know what? I do want to go back and we talked about this last week, but I want to touch back on it on, um, the whole Xbox Live price raise and price drop real quick. So last week, Microsoft was like, "Hey, we're going to raise the price of Xbox Live Gold to one month went up to ten nine nine, three months went up to." I think twenty nine nine. I may be wrong. And six months went up to fifty nine nine nine, which was basically the price of a twelve month subscription. And people got severely pissed off. And within the course of a day, Microsoft walked that back and reverted all the pricing. Then they came back out and said, "You know what? All the games that should be free to play are now free to play, or will be in the near future." So, Carl, thoughts on that? How stupid are Microsoft? Seriously. Um... This this just goes to show that well at least they listen to their audience and you know they're willing to admit that when they've stuffed up, you know they they listened when uh, they went hey we're gonna put always online DRM on the Xbox One and everybody said ah, you do that we're not buying it so they went um, we're gonna take it off please buy our system and now they've gone oh we're gonna put up the prices and the people have gone ah, no we don't want to pay it and they're like well no okay fine. Would you like Game Pass instead? Because that's all this really really is. It was just a way yeah. for them to try and move people off the Xbox Live system, which they have stated that they want to look at trying to wind back and removing completely to focus on the Game Pass service. Which I, I mind th- which, uh, Well, that's it. It's, it, it is a, it's a good service, and I don't see why, if you're getting Xbox uh, Live or Xbox Gold Live or whatever it is at the moment... Pony up the extra couple of bucks and go Xbox Game Pass. The service is so much better. You get Xbox Live as a part of the, the service anyway, and you get 100-plus games per month that you get to sit there and play through. You know, yeah. I don't see why people are trying to hold on to this antiquated system that really shouldn't be around anymore. It's, the only a, thing, it's price point, I guess. Well, I think a lot of people... There were some people that came out with this really asinine explanation that... Just because you have Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Game Pass Ultimate doesn't mean I want to play all these games that are available. And I'm like, but that's the whole point. Somebody's giving you access to free games with the same service for a couple of more dollars. Why would you not do that? That doesn't make any sense. You get all the day one, all the Xbox published games from Microsoft day one, forever, forever. All Xbox published games are on Xbox Game Pass forever or until as long as the service continues to be a thing that's perfect i don't see why anybody would not want that ultimate is the best of all worlds you get xbox you get all these games for xbox you get access to ea live now or whatever the hell they're calling it now um access to the games for the pc as well uh xbox live gold it's like this is the best of all worlds but i will go back and say how microsoft tried to do that by forcing it on people was not the right decision completely wrong uh, what's the price point between Xbox Live Gold and uh, Xbox Ultimate Pass Arena? Well, Xbox Go, Xbox Live Gold for we'll do six months is um, was it thirty nine nine nine? Forty bucks for six months. Yeah, where Xbox uh, Game Pass. I don't actually know the entire pricing. Let me get that for you. Hang on. Let me grab of that right. because I don't. Price I don't pay attention. Matters. Yeah, I don't pay attention to it because I just pay it. I think it's like fourteen bucks a month. Yeah, it's fourteen dollars a month. Fourteen dollars a month, or they don't really put the pricing on the website. Nope. I usually buy cards too, so I don't really. Don't really yeah, so you just bought a card. So you buy a card. Uh, card gets you what a year? Is it's there... six. It's sixty dollars. So here we go. If you buy Ultimate for six months it's 59 dollars. so it's yeah they basically push you to the xbox live gold plus game pass ultimate pricing if you do it 12 months it's a hundred dollars mm, but you're getting so it's it's double it's almost double the price for 12 months but you get get you get xbox live gold you get in all those games plus you get access to the games on the pc so it makes sense if you're a pc gamer if you don't really care about it but then again there's also xbox game pass for pc which is a lot cheaper the only thing the only time xbox game pass ultimate comes into play and it's a great value is if you have an xbox and a pc 
like I do. I have my PC in my room, Xbox in my room. I have Xbox downstairs so the kids can play it. Then it's perfect. It's perfect. It saves me so much money. So it really depends on your situation. But forcing it, and again, I don't have any problem with Xbox Game Pass, but forcing it upon people to say, hey, we're changing the price to fall in line with Xbox Game Pass, deal with it, was not the right move. And I'm glad they walked that back. Not that they wanted to. <laughs> they were kind yeah, of but, forced to but, 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 but what's the answer then? If you're trying to get people onto this other service, then how do you get them on that other service without pissing them off? You drop the price to Game Pass to fall yeah, in line with uh, Xbox yeah, Live yeah, Gold, exactly. and then you nip gold. And then you nip gold. You say, "All right, <laughs> you're dropping the price to Xbox Pass." Listen, you drop the price for Game Pass to the same price as Xbox um, Live, and then you slowly ramp up the price over the years, which most businesses will do. Or, or, the, or there was that, that introductory offer of you get it for like three or six months for a dollar if you have Xbox. Uh, live, which is how you and I have originally got a hold of this. Or you just don't buy Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Well, actually, I think Pat Game Pass itself is also it's the, it's the same price. So yeah, yeah. I, I, That's what you so, do. So I, I just don't like. I, I reckon people should be getting onto the idea of uh, getting the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate because, again, it might cost you a little bit more at the end of the day. But it is so much more worth it. And people are going, oh, well, I don't want to play all these hundreds of games. What, so you're satisfied with the randomly picked four games per month? Yeah. Yeah, which a lot of the time is stuff, a lot of stuff that people already have. So why why are you paying for a service that your your big thing is, oh, I get four free games a month. Yeah, but they're usually trash. Like you, you could problem, you, you could literally go out and buy those those same games for less than what you're paying for that service. The problem here is Microsoft is painted has painted themselves into a corner. They're 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 not going to make a move without pissing off some people. So again, the only logical choice is for them to drop the price of Game Pass, which they, which they their- will not do because then that cuts in the profits and everything else. But they can't go back and say we're killing Xbox Live. And you saw well, they, well, they, they're they're not, well, this, well, this is the thing. They, they should. I reckon they should just turn around and go. We're going to end the Xbox, uh, Xbox Live. So we're not going to end the service. We're just going to roll it into Game Pass. Do sort but of like the, um, you know, Matt, Matt will sort of understand this a little bit as well. Um, do like what the WWE Network is doing with uh, Pe- Peacock. Yeah. If you if you've already got a WWE Network subscription, which is nine ninety nine a month. Then you've been rolled. They're now merging with Peacock to provide the services. What they're doing is they're taking the WWE service for your nine 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 nine. They're rolling that your membership into Peacock's Basic, which is like five ninety nine a month or something like that. So you're saving a few bucks, and you get the option to upgrade to like the premium package, which was your original nine ninety nine a month. If they if they turn around, they said we're going to end Xbox Live, like as a subscription service, but we're going to take all your subscription and roll them into a basic version of Xbox Game Pass, where you just have access to the console version. And if you want to upgrade to the Ultimate, then you can. That's that I would see as, as a smarter move. Yes, it means once again you you might end up paying more. But it's a better idea than just going, hey, we're going to up the price. Because they, they need... Having the two services now is redundant. They need to roll everybody into the Xbox Game Pass service in some way, shape, or form. Because that that's going to be their, their going forward. That's their selling point going forward. I'm telling you, the only way they're going to be able to do this without much backlash is dropping the price. Which, they, know which, which they will not do. They're not going to do. You know, that that's... That's that's not it's not good business. So I mean, you know, it's not good business long term, but it's good to give you a little door now. Then you just casually raise it back to it should be. Well, that's, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah, I mean that might. But be the, but, the thing, but the thing is, if you bring, if you drop it down, then everybody's going to be going. Oh, they've done a price reduction. Cool, not a problem. And then when you start bringing the prices back up, then you run into the same situation that you have just a few weeks ago. 
That's what I'm saying. They're in a tough situation. It, 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 again, they where, 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 whereas I would I would say just turn around and say we are ending this as a subscription service, and you are going to get a Xbox only version of Game Pass for the remainder of your subscription. If you wish to continue from there, then you can either keep going with this basic subscription, or you can get Game Pass Ultimate. See, they they they, think- they need to do a hard cut, or else it's or else they're going to have these two services around forever because there will always be a group of people who will take the cheaper service and the second that that's threatened, ah, don't do it! I don't want to pay any more money. Yeah, yeah, that's what's happening. So the thing that I want to point out, and I, and we can jump off if you want. The thing I really want to point out here is, while we all agree that Game Pass is the better service. Game Pass Ultimate is the better service because it wraps everything in the, in the one. PC, Xbox, and Gold into one package for fifty nine 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 for six months. We'll focus on that point. When you look at the PlayStation, they're literally giving you the same thing as Xbox is. However, however, they're giving you a better package. Look at what PlayStation is doing now. PlayStation Now, for example, is about the same price as Xbox Game Pass. With less games, without all the bonuses, you get you get monthly perks on Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which you can use for various different things, Disney Plus, extra games, other services. You still get the online play. You get to download your games, not stream them. I mean, PlayStation now you can find download them. Finally, it only took them forever, but you still get more on Xbox Game Pass. And they're doing the same exact thing, two different services. So, yeah, Xbox has a problem. Because I don't think Sony is going to roll their stuff into one package because they realize that PlayStation um, Now is not a good deal. But PlayStation Now has not been a good deal for quite some time. You look at Xbox Game Pass, it's freaking awesome. It's, it's never it gives been. It more. That, a, lot of the, a lot of Sony's problem is the fact that they don't believe in backwards compatibility. Like they they really just want you to play the latest and greatest games and that's it. They don't want you going back into the old library and playing the old stuff. Oh, I, they, I hate the fact that, that PlayStation that's, now lets you get the new games, but then they, they take them away really quick. Yeah, so you, at least you get the PlayStation Now service. We still don't have it! You're not missing it. You're, no. you're not missing much. No, that, that's that's why I'm more than happy to pay for Xbox Game Pass at this point. Yeah, it's, Microsoft needs to figure out a solution for that. I, I don't see an easy way of getting out of this. I do think they're pretty much screwed, but <laughs> they're going to have to figure it out. Eventually... And you can you can you can uh, hold me to this. Xbox Live is going to go away. I'm pretty sure Microsoft has been plotting to, re- to remove this. Oh, they've they've been now. open and honest about it. They've said that we eventually want to remove the Xbox Live subscription service and focus on Game Pass. It has been yeah. said. So they they want to do it. It's just doing it in a manner that's not going to have all the little. You know, cheapy little kids go. And I want to pay extra money. Meanwhile, they you know they're the same type that'll be dropping dropping six hundred dollars stimulus checks in the stonks. You know what they say: you can please some people all the time, but you can't please all the people all the time. Or you can't you can please some of the people some of the time, but you can't please all the people all the time. And that's what this is. They're going to have to do it. They're going to have to do a hard cut. They're going to piss off people, but it's going to be like you know what. You'll love us. You'll love us later, or you know what? Maybe you won't love us, but it is what it is. Sorry, this is what has to be done. The question is: Does Microsoft have? I don't want to say the business sense. Do they have the balls to do it? They don't. They don't have the balls. They they got the guy from from Sony who kowtows to whims on a you know. Uh, oh, I can't remember the guy's name anymore. But like they, they grabbed the guy that was running Sony for a while and he came up with all these great ideas that Sony wouldn't let him do. But at the same time, every time somebody kicks up a stink, he'll be the first one to go, oh, I'm sorry, we'll back off, we'll back off, we'll back off. No, they need someone with balls who are going to say, look, we're going to have to do this. It's going to piss a lot of people off, but this is the way we need to run our business from here on out. Yeah, yeah, it's... it's- yeah, again, it's, it's going to make people mad, but it, it's one of those situations where you have to do what you have to do. There's that. Don't want to kick the dead horse anymore, but as always, if you have any suggestions or questions or comments about this, you can always let us know. Email us or drop a comment on Twitter. We'd love to know. Moving along, unless you have something to say, Matt. 
Oh, no, no. I just find that Microsoft creating their own problems like always. So, wish you guys a good 2021. Hopefully, you won't, won't fall into this pitfall again. We're going to touch on another topic we talked about last week, which was Resident Evil Village, which we met. You didn't watch it, but Carl and I watched the Resident Evil Village showcase. And we came away, I think, overall impressed. I think impressed is the word. I know you were slightly agitated because they weren't doing something for the anniversary, or they could have been doing more for the anniversary. But doing that show, they showed us some new gameplay of Village. They gave us that crappy upcoming team-based shooter PvP nonsense, Resident Evil Reverse. Uh, I'm not looking forward to that. I wish they would just stop doing that crap. You know, it is what it is, but I wish they would stop. And they gave us the main demo, which is a demo, a technical demo for Resident Evil Village that has nothing to do with Village. But it does show a certain tall lady that the internet is thirsting for. Carl, what did you think about the maiden demo? And did you come away impressed or did you want more? Uh, with the, the maiden demo, I will straight up say I am, in, I am impressed with just due to the way that they work sound, the way they work lighting. And it, it really does showcase the graphical power that the PlayStation 5 can produce. Because like, I played it. Uh, recently again with my partner Rachel who's a big horror fan and she's loving all the Victorian era styling of the house and the way that the lights and shadows play against the walls Um, she was actually seeing things that I didn't or she might have been imagining them she was thinking that some of the um, the portraits on the walls were actually following us or um, like the eyes were following us or something along those lines it's so hard to really describe because it's really one of those things that you have to play to do. Like, the sound in it was really good. Like, there's one point uh, where you can find the main door that you end up exiting at the end of the demo, but there's a broken or open window nearby. And if oh, you've I got and, and if you've got, like, the right side type of headset or the right yes. type of surround sound speaker system, you f- you hear the, the rush of air going right over the top of it. Can, and, I, can I just tell you, I took my PlayStation 5 downstairs to hook it up to the surround sound just for that because maybe yeah. I'm just fanboying here, but I, I literally felt the chill of the audio. It was really that good. That was impressive. Yeah, exactly. It. Like, that was really good. Um, like when one of the daughters uh, actually like is stalking you and you hear her echo around the hall and stuff like that, that surround sound is really well done as well. Um Sure, things were very, very simple, but it was there to serve as a sort of a technical preview or an interactive yeah. preview where you got to see and I th- like what the game is going to be like. And I think this is a, going to be a part of the game. Um, I like the uh, what was I can't remember what they called the demo for Resident Evil Seven, but what it, but it, whatever that was, that ended up being um, a cassette tape. In the, in the game that you put in that did a little backstory thing and you basically played parts of that demo. I reckon they are going to keep this in the game because it, it is the main beginning house. Hour. Beginning the, hour. Beginning, beginning hour. hour, yes. Thank there you. we go. I, you had me thinking about that for a second. Mm. I'm like, what was it? Yeah, but um, with this demo, because it involves the main, uh, I think it's just Demoscu or something, whatever the, the house is, it's not Big Titty Lady? No, no, that's not her name. It's it's Lady Demoscu or something. Um, you know, because it's, it's, that is the house. And if you notice when you play through it, there are multiple doors that are still locked in that house. So I reckon that's going to play a part of the game. But overall, yeah, I was impressed. Um, Rachel got a good good laugh out of it a couple of times. It's going to be interesting to see when you actually have to play that with like your ability to block and uh, you know using firearms and stuff in the game, how it's going to play out from there. So it's a good start of the game anyway. What do you think about... Actually, I want to know what Rachel thinks about this. I'm pretty sure you've talked to her about that. What do you think about uh, Lady... Just Mascara, Mascara. whatever her name is. I can't, I can't pronounce her name. I don't understand the fascination about her... Like, I don't know why there's so many people being so thirsty. I reckon this is probably just a, a, a uh, 
a side effect of being in lockdown for too long or something. Oh my god! Like, like, Shit like, pe- people, oh people are god. thirsty about this. Their cosplayers are already doing it. Like, really? Like, oh, wow. I have. Oh my god, the cosplayers. I I've seen about three or four cosplayers pop up because I'm I'm on TikTok, so I go through and the cosplay community is oh, on there. Lord. And there was one that I swear to God looked like she was just she would have been the model for the game. Yeah, I like she one hundred. We posted it on the site. Yeah, yeah, that as well. Like yeah. that is like one hundred percent perfect. Except she had the glove on the wrong hand. <laughs> that was the one I'm thing. I, that was one. Me. That was what. That was the one thing. I, no, that was the one thing I noticed. She had the glove on the wrong hand. She had the glove on the left hand instead of the right. But that was, the glove, like, terrible. Terrible. No, 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 no. Oh, believe me, it's still a ten out of ten. But um, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm a nitpicker for for details like that. But uh, like. Like the cosplayers and that are like absolutely brilliant, but the thing is they're not tall enough as well. But you know who's really going to find like an eight foot tall lady with you know a, a figure like that in this day and age? But yeah, um, if you really want to find out, I can get Rachel for you. That's easy. <laughs> I'm just curious because you know I, I, somebody I talk to a lot on Twitter. Right, and one he, sec. He poses, well, while he's gone, he poses a very uh, a, a a very educational and interesting viewpoint regarding this character and how everybody is again thirsty for this woman because she's very voluptuous and it's like why are you guys being over this lady and it brings the whole thing of sexism and games back to the forefront i'm not trying to go that route but it really does show that hey capcom went out the way to make a lady look like this and you gotta wonder if they knew exactly what they were doing because matt you know this and Street Fighter, Street Fighter is a perfect example. They went out of their way to 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 desexualize certain characters. Remember the whole thing back in the day with Cammy, and they they changed how Cammy looked. And um, uh, yeah, yeah, Miko, Miko, Chung super Lee cyber, Miko, yeah, 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 Miko, yeah. They went back and changed all that nonsense. Like, nope, we can't do this. And now you've got you've got this. I don't understand what Capcom is doing. It's all right, so it's Rachel here. Hello. Hey, Rachel. Hey. How are you? So I just had a question for you. So you've watched Carl play the Resident Evil Village maiden demo, correct? I have, yes. What do you think about the lady at the end that kills you? What do you the think si- about her design? The siren? Well, lady, whatever. I, Carl, help me. Lady, I cannot pronounce this name on Turtle's name. The the Mitrusu or something like that. I don't know what her name is. But the, not, the, not the one that stops you, but the one at the very end that impels you with her Lady Deathstrike Wolverine Claw at the very end. <laughs> uh, I called her Mrs. Um, Kruger, but um, I thought that was quite interesting. Um, I I would like to see what the development is on her character because, like, to suddenly be impaled and not really know more than her smile, it's like, is she like uh, Lady Bethu- like Bethesda, the... Um, you know, like a vampire character. Like, I, I see her as, like, that kind of thing. Well, she's supposed to be a vampire, but yet she can see herself in a reflection in the mirror. So that's that's very troublesome as well. Well, that's haven't thing. explained that yet. I've seen a lot of TikTok videos where they're saying that she's a siren. So I don't know. Like, I'm curious, like, the development, like, where she'll progress from where she is. All right, so... The question I have for you is, what do you think about her design? Does it bother you? Does it offend you in any way? Me as a woman or me as a a, a person viewing the game? Because <laughs> well, I, I, I have... Any, yeah. Either or. I, I, to be perfectly honest, I am not a feminist. I am not against the way a woman looks in a, any kind of way. Like, to me, I think she looks hot. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So it's not to get a different viewpoint. That's fair enough. Like she's got a very mixed sort of. She has the ethereal of like the when you sort of go through the game, you see a lot of documents stating that it was like the 15th century, but she sort of has that Edwardian look to her. So I sort of find intrigue in that. Is she going back in time? Like, what is her? her presence like historically speaking when i sort of look at things and when they sort of reference a genre or era i sort of generally go okay is this historically accurate so but 
like with the Resident Evil games, you can never predict or be sure of the timelines. Yeah, you got that right. I don't think Capcom knows. They make the <laughs> game. But to be perfectly honest, like I liked the way she looked. Um, she looks trusting. Like I imagine if you got to part of the game where it's if you go one direction, you can become friends with her or another direction. She could become an absolute like evil bitch. <laughs> I don't know. If I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to Belle Bib DeVoe on this one. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't trust a woman with a big butt and a smile. I know. No. Ah. <laughs> no. Nope. <laughs> but thank you for your for your honest opinion on that one. Thank you. But like in terms of the like when you look at that and you look at the the previous Resident Evil, um, I don't know what number that was. But like in terms of the design and flow of the game, like she was a very like she wasn't a jump scare, I would say. She was more of a like, huh, okay, that's interesting. Like, she was not what I kind of anticipated. Like, when you see the other sort of samples for Resident Evil, like that other one um, where you got the crying Se- baby in the bathroom, like that Seven. generally. Yeah. That genuinely had me on the edge of my seat and screaming and going, oh, God, we're going to die. Whereas this one, I sort of want to see a little bit more of, like, you heard the voices as you're going through the mansion as well. So it's like, is that her voice? Well, we got a lot. We got a long way to go. I mean, the game comes out in May, and we just got a taste of the demo. So I'm pretty sure they're going to bring the scares. That's what they do, and they they did that in seven. They wanted to go back to the the true uh, survival horror. I have no doubt they'll do it in eight. Or I'm sorry, let me fix that village before Carl gets mad at me calling (laughs) it eight. Yeah, it's village, Resident Evil Village. Well, that's the other thing. It's like with the the part that he played, we just had her at the end. But I've seen footage of other people have gone a little bit further, and there's like a a mass group of people. No, well. don't look at them. Those are the leaks. Avoid okay. your eyes. Those ah, are the leaks. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it, somebody. Capcom <laughs> had got hacked, and they leaked the entire game. It's don't oh. do it. Don't spoil yourself. Oops. Yeah, it's, it's bad. Well, I, like I said, like on TikTok, I've seen different people with different extracts and like, I don't play the games, but I watch Carl play. And to me, it's like a live action film where you get to choose your, cho- you choose the path that you go and the outcome of what happens to the characters. I'm actually intrigued with this one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you need to make sure that Carl sits down and plays the game when it comes out with you. So. You can tell um, us what you think about the game. We, we're we're going to have you back, Rachel. We're going to have you back on the show. That's going to be fun. Sweet. I really love the Resident Evil. Like, all of them have their sort of very unique stylings. And with the whole concept of village, I'm like, to me, it's sort of, I think of M. Night Shyamalan with his village film. And I think, is there going to be more of an outside world perspective? Not just any, in, you know, like, you sort of, it's going to be a little bit more of, world development than character development so yeah <laughs> all right well thanks for stopping by you're welcome Ooh. it was a pleasure to do an input <laughs> hey that was fun she really enjoyed it that was good talking yeah. to her that was good i just I it's just... nice to have a female a point of view especially she had no problems with the character design so that's cool yeah i mean it's character design well, that's like what it is. It is. <laughs> Um, as far as myself and carl we're both ready for the game we simply cannot wait for this game to come out um we can't wait to see the next thirst more for this tall lady because I can't pronounce the name. And I want to know what happens in the storyline. I know I don't want to see any leaks. I don't care about the leaks. I want to play the damn game for myself. Thank you. That said, we're going to turn it over to Matt. He's going to talk about the ongoing GameStop stocks. This is going to be fun. Pay attention, kids. All He's right. going to teach us a thing or two. All right. That's all you so- got. All right, so once upon a time, I'm going to start with a story. There's a company called Melvin Capital. They're a hedge fund company. Hedge fund companies are companies that hedge bets that bet against the interests of sometimes a company to make profit. So basically, how would they hedge? Well, what they do was is they borrow money or stock for someone else, promise to pay that guy back the value of the stock it is. While they are actively make betting that the money will the price of stock go down based on speculation and other things. So let's say basically you uh I borrow 
and we'll probably use fruits as an example. I borrow 10, ban- 10 apples from Carl. I'm not telling Carl that the price of apple is $5. Now, the price of the apple at the market is not $5. It's actually $2. So I'm going to guess it go lower and lower to a dollar. And then when I sell all the apples back to the market at its lower value, I make out like a bandit and all will do is pay back and just pay back Carl the money I borrowed from the apples. Now, what would happen if the apple price was higher? Then I have to pay back Carl a lot more money. And that's what's happening to GameStop. A bunch of local investors and investment groups from Wall Street Bets to Economics Twitter and Economics Reddit, all these guys decided to say, you know what? We heard about this people going short on GameStop and AMC and even Nokia and other companies. Let's just uh let's just go fuck those guys. And they did. <laughs> and it worked out pretty well. To a point that a lot of people, uh, such as Robin Hood, has stopped has closed down the app to stop you from buying stock. And the reason why is because the people who make Robinhood are part of the companies that were also hedging against GameStop. They stop people from using for their financial interests, which is against the law and kind of illegal. There's actually a lawsuit some users are saying about this because you prevent them from doing this. And why would they do that? I don't know. It's a lot of people losing their minds and freaking out because uh, people have never seen this before. You know what this is called? It's called capitalism. People participate in the market and buy things. That's what happens. You hedged too heavily and didn't anticipate that somebody might buy the stock. Buying stock causes the value to go up because it increases the demand. Selling stock means there's less demand. People can get rid of it. When you go short, you're trying to sell. You can't sell if the price goes up. So basically, if the stock price keeps going up, hedge fund companies like Melvin Capital will have to actually pay back a lot of money to the people they borrowed to buy that stock to for the short it. So that's what's happening right now. And it can have a really big downfall. So the worst, the thing that makes it worse is that uh, how business media has been portraying this outside of get whatever. Uh, some some investor groups that try to speak to the president, Joe Biden, about it. Joe Biden's like, what the fuck are you talking about? How is it my problem? This is capitalism. Are you complaining you lost money or are you complaining you're, lo- you're going to lose money? And people are losing their mind. This can't happen, and it's it's hilarious. I just find it funny that people forgot how businesses about buying and selling things work. It's just common sense. I just explain as best as I can. What makes it really good is that currently, um, even though people, they, even though uh, Robinhood has stopped people from trying to purchase it through their app, people found other means to purchase, such as calling up your local stockbroker who's down on this Wall Street, um, using VPN to use other markets to buy it, like buying it through German markets or Asian markets. You can do that. I'm serious. It's, you can't stop me from buying internationally. Just do some currency exchange. They well, let try- me ask you this. Let me ask you this. If you could still buy stock through Robinhood, would you recommend the average person to do so? No. Uh, Robinhood has shown me bias. I would recommend people use other ways of purchasing stock. I don't recommend – I was – even before Robinhood got big, I have told many of my uh, friends and investor friends not to use the Robinhood map or use social apps for investing simply because of – it's – they're selling you convenience, but they're the one who controls all your data and take profit from you. And there is nothing in their TOS that stops them from stopping you from buying it. If you use something like E-Trade or Bloomberg Terminal, old school – having a broker or whatnot, they can't they can't stop because you told them what to do. They're already taking your money. The thing about Robin Hood is that it in order for it to happen, you must have money before they take it. So for example, let's just say I wanted to buy uh 25 stock of BP LTC, which is BP oil. If I went to yacht if I went to a broker or e-trade, I can buy it through them and pay back as soon as I made the order. The thing about Robin Hood they're doing is they're refusing the order and closing it on the market. They're, they're refusing to take the order, while other trading firms are not allowed to do that because it's a convenience app on your phone. There's only one-to-one ratio. I would not recommend people using Robin Hood even back then when I was telling my friends when it was coming up or even now, which shows that mask off their bias and will actually stop you from making investments that are against their interest. Okay, so let me rephrase it. If you could buy stocks through GameStop, to get to to play with the stocks right now, would you tell people to do it? Uh yes, I would tell people to do to buy a small amount of stock so you could be a jerk off and then go short mon- and get rid of it Monday morning or end of day Friday. If you just want to be a, just make some quick bucks in and out. Are 
individual investors at any risk of losing anything? Um, as, outside the original investors, yes. Though right now the stock has hit free fall. It's uh, it took a huge dip. It, like it went from it dropped hundred, it dropped forty four percent as of now. So let's say you buy it tomorrow at because mm, it dipped around, it crashed around. It was like two, at peak about like four hundred dollars at peak. It was like oh god, yeah, four ninety two peak, and it just crashed halfway through the day. So it's going to dip. Maybe it'll go back up again. We don't know. Um, but if you bought it today and if you sell it and within like two or three hours, you'd be fine. But the thing, though, is like the stock now is worth $193. If you got on it when it was like less than 10 when it was like $20, $30, yeah. But people are now moving to other stocks like AMC. Yeah, uh, I saw that before we started the show. Yeah, people started moving to AMC. People are moving to Nokia, other stuff. I just personally find it's very investing that people are getting into the stock market in different ways. I'm really, very happy about it. Hey, man, if they got money to waste, they can give me the money without playing the market. I'm just saying. I could use that money. True, true. And I really find this interesting as from a, from a philosophical and policy standpoint that uh, this proves that the rich or the bourgeois, we want to call them, they're not capitalists. They're not. They're, never, they're all about solidarity fucking you over. Because if they really care, they let us do it. So keep doing it. You literally stop people from using an app to purchase, to participate in a thing you've been telling people to do for years. Free market's the best. Go ahead, guys. It's fantastic. Okay, let me do it. Stop doing that, please. Come on. No, no, no. Chill out. Chill out. What the hell, dude? I'm doing what you told me to do. Literally. Yeah, it's. I just find it interesting from that from that perspective. Like, it just – right now, it's a squeeze. I think I think there'll be an increase the next day. Um, going Maybe an increase tomorrow the next day, but – um, I think that it really didn't, they already did enough damage to the Melvin company, so it'll be interesting. I mean, the only people that don't benefit from this is GameStop, which I find hilarious, but that's about it. Everyone else benefited but GameStop. Yeah, well, I, I, I have no love loss for GameStop, so... No, basically. Yeah. And yeah. Inter- an interesting part about this, too, is um, outside of hurting the, you know, the fat cats and the hedge brokers, is it very, it shows you the power of the uh, what people, uh, not little political stuff, like people protesting, people learn to ignore protesting, people learn to demonize other forms of like strikes, whatever. How about you just talk of your dollar? Literally ruin other people's financial futures with your money. That's not a crime. I mean, I mean, is anyone really going to tell you what to do with your own dollar? Unless you're going to go buy guns and kill people, that's a different thing. But if you mean, going they out, do it all the time. The government tells me well, how to use my money all the time. I mean, well, yeah. taxes are taxes. You know, that's that's <laughs> that's life. That You can't escape that. We got the tariff thanks to the good old Donald Trump that uh, screwed everybody over. Uh, uh, maybe Biden will fix that. I'm being serious. Maybe he'll fix that. But that needs to, that needs to get fixed. Big time. Yeah, that needs to get fixed bad. But it's very interesting though how it's kind of affects the market and a set of again people try to say oh it's like insider trading. It's not insider trading because these are normal people talking to each other normally. It's like we're doing a podcast right now. Like we're talking to each other by le- giving each other the news. Are we really ruining Resident Evil Eight? No. But just telling people about it. Ruining Resident Evil 8 will be if a developer Resident Evil will find out, realize, oh no, this is all a fake. The games we made in 8 bit graphic, low times are horrible. Uh, you know, all that other jazz. That's not Cyberpunk. happening. Cyberpunk? Shh, don't, we're going to talk about that. Cyberpunk 2077, where you redu- re- when you release a patch that breaks the game, you need to release the hotfix to fix your patch. That's that's uh, just the and best. They, and, they, and they paid and they paid for it. Games the uh the CD Project Red stock went down. Exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. So it's just interesting, though, like this this type of thing is great um, for markets and it gives and it also teaches them a valuable lesson that um, stop playing the market if you know what you're doing. Don't play market what you're doing. Stop hedging against things because in series, when you hedge against markets or hedge against companies, you hedging can actually destroy companies or industries in a very macro scale. Um, it happens. I mean, in some cases, it's responsible for Toys R Us. In America, it oh, can't. That, can be, that yeah, was disastrous. That was disastrous. Yeah, hedging hedging does that. And well, well, can the, link to that. The, you know, the, big, the biggest example of what happened when the when Wall Street hit, hedged their bets and went short on things. Uh, let's see, last time they did that in mass quantities, oh uh, yeah, it created the global financial crisis. Of 2008, yeah. And that was a mm-hmm. combination of hedging bullshit as well as a thing that I'm going to give you guys. Investment banking and commercial banking should never mix. Commercial banking is when you go to your bank, you deposit your paycheck there. And take money out. That's commercial banking. Investment banking is when a bank takes people's money and put it into the market. They should never mix. I do not feel comfortable that my, a bank would take my money that I earn by working and invest it in something else that, without my consent. That's a problem. 
That should not be a thing. Thanks. So that's that's that in a nutshell. But yeah, that's the whole game mark uh, GameStop stock thing. It's really interesting. It's a good case study, and I hope this increase uh, something I have to call financial activism. Because we, we learned they, people ignore people by protesting, whatever. Maybe if we just start making companies go broke, maybe they'll start listening to people. Or maybe they'll just do things that maybe a lot of people deem illegal or immorally incorrect and get away with it. Well, exactly. That's the best part about it. Those moral incorrect people are crying to the government and crying to people. What they are crying, trying to change the media, whatever. The thing is, like, the disgusting part about it is, like, they completely shut out people from using the application to compete in the market, which shows, again, what I was talking about earlier as, as a philosophical point, are you really capitalist if you're stopping me from competing in the market? I'm doing nothing wrong. I'm just buying a stock, bro. Good old GameStop stocks. This is going to be interesting to see what happens next week and who, who many people are going to lose their money and how many companies or, uh, or hedge funds are going to Roll over yeah. and yeah and uh yeah and especially especially like uh the I, I wonder if the if the if the courts would take the cases of users suing Robinhood and other uh, apps it's just crazy. That's gonna be interesting because yeah they're literally stopping people from doing something that's not deemed illegal so they're protecting they're protecting the fat cats so yeah, yeah exactly I would sue them I would definitely sue them yeah. All right, well thank you for the educational look. I did not understand that, but I know a lot more now than I did ten minutes ago. No problem. Dab stonks, baby. Stonks. Oh, boy. Wish I had played some GameStop stonks. I really would have made some money. Anywho, I think we're at the end of today's show. This one went a lot better. This one will go up live very soon. Um, Carl, you got anything to say before we bounce? I wish I could have got some Game Stonks. But I, we, I, I, well, really actually, you, probably still, you could probably still get into it, Carl. You're in the Asian <laughs> market, so you're not locked out. Uh, well, I'm probably not locked out, but the uh, the price point at the moment <laughs> is definitely not. The game stonks is not the one I'd be investing in. And I like I'd probably go AMC at this point, true, which true. Uh, which is from what I've seen has just gained a I think it's like a two point three percent increase over the last couple of hours. Yeah, hmm. and you're up before us, so you know the future stonks. <laughs> No, but the thing is, like, Australian stock exchange doesn't work the same way as the the Wall Street stock exchange. So if I was to go to get the GameStop one, which was, um, I think it was like GME or something like that, if I was to buy that here, that's a completely different company. (laughs) Oh, Lord. So I'd have to find some way to trade in American stocks, which would mean getting one of those apps to do it. Uh, The worst part is, like, yeah, get... Oh, God, yeah, you get one of those apps. Or, as I mentioned earlier... Using VPNs and learning how to trade on internationally, which a lot of these, the economic wait, 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 community wait, wait, wait. is that legal? Talk- of yes. course it is. Yeah. Yep. Wow. V- okay. v- VPNs are not illegal. VPNs, yeah. Huh. Yeah. I yeah. would have thought that would be illegal. Wow. Nope. You learn something every day. No, no, no. It's it's not. Trust me. How, how do you think people got through trading right now when when Robinhood got closed? They use VPNs and other 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 means to trade with other people to get money. Yeah. Wow. I'll be see damn. see when, huh. see when, see when I. See, Personally, when I saw all this happen, I know we're meant to be wrapping up the show, but just for my little few cents, um, when I saw all this type of sa- stuff happening, I knew exactly what was going on from the second it happened. Um, I've been playing a sort of a, a pretend version of all this for years, known as the Hollywood Stock Exchange, <laughs> um, hsx.com if you're interested. Uh, it is literally, you know, stock trading and, and doing shorting and everything on actors, TV shows, and movie projects. I've been, I've been doing that since I was, I think I've been doing it for nearly 15 odd years. <laughs> and I, I've made, I think you start out with like a million dollars or something like that. I've, I've made well and truly over 10 over the, at the moment. But uh, yeah, it's like, Seeing all this happen with the real stocks, it's like, man, I wish I had the money to, to get in on this. Like, I've, I've seen people here in Australia who have actually been able to get in on some of this. Uh, I was reading an article on Kotaku just a moment ago where uh, a couple of people from that site put a thousand US dollars into AMC, made like six hundred dollars in two hours, and then pulled it out and went, "Yep, we're good." <laughs> that doesn't seem like a very decent profit, but okay. Well, six hundred American dollars. So that's like they pre- they pretty much doubled their investment. Eh, go all in. So, if you want to do it, just go all in. Yeah. 
No, I don't uh, recommend uh, going all in. I, I'm, a, I'm more of a split type person. Yeah. Of bear, but, yeah, just, yeah. Just, just be careful because there have been stories of like people emptying, emptying their 401k into this. Why would you do that? Holy because crap. people got into the hype. That's because, another thing about yeah. situations like this. Yeah, people buy the hype. Yeah. That's just stupid. I would no. No, I would not be doing that. But then again, you're right. You're right. People do some weird shit. You're right. Yep. Mm. <laughs> Though, like but, I said, I'm um, very. Ha- I'm more happy that people are participating in the market, regardless of they're rich or not. It's like it really, really does help everyone. Yeah. If you participate. Because now they can't cheat us if we all compete. I'm being serious. You know that old saying: "It can't kill us all." You know. Yep. Even but even people but- usually do that. <laughs> and and that's what oh. the, that's what the hedge funds are trying to do at the moment is trying to get that uh, economic nuke going on yeah. the stock so so that they can regain regain control over Wall Street. I wish them the best with that because we're still buying boys stocks. I mean, we're just me like there are people who are buying just for just to, just to mess with them. It's just a meme. It's like why are you oh, yeah. doing this to see you die, bro? <laughs> uh, oh, look, some people have been doing it just to see the memes that pop up on like Reddit and Twitter. I've, I'm yeah. looking at one right now. There was a tweet from the official Blockbuster video account saying, "Hey Reddit, do your thing." <laughs> hey Reddit, oh, man, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna post. I'm gonna post a meme in the in the, in the chat so you guys can see it. Like this is actually my favorite so far. But yeah, the, the is it the the Robin Hood trailer, traders with six hundred uh, stimmy checks? That's the Terminator and the hedge funds. No, 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 no. I, I just spent it in spectator mode. You guys should see it. I'm gonna yeah. See in the, the spectator. Yeah, you should see it. You see it's in the too chat. Too small. I can't read. It's tiny, it. Click man. the button. Yeah, I did, and it's still tiny. It's oh god, dang! It. I, all right, time, all right. I'll send you the OG links. I'll send you. I'm I'll, gonna I'll, enhance. Mm-hmm. Enhance. Enhance. There you go. Enhance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what happens oh, when I geez. use when I don't use stonk links. <laughs> I have the high ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good but, old but, Anakin. But at the end of the day, look, uh, good on good on to all these people who got in early on this game stonks. Like I've seen, the best one I saw was a guy who got in early and he's made like he spent little over seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and he's made like twenty two million. Yeah, Think like, of all the Xbox Series like, X and PlayStation Fives you can buy with that right now. I'm also happy that some. Uh, I heard stories that people actually use it to like. Some guy used it to kill his dog. Some guy used it to help pay his rent. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, like I'm, 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 yeah. Did some you guy say kill his dog. No, to heal no, his dog. Heal. Heal his dog. Oh, I heard kill. I like, I, yeah, I've, my- I've I've heard the same type of stories. I've heard I've heard a guy did it because it would pay his rent. A guy, did, another person did it to pay for their the vet bills. I've heard people like on uh, on cancer going, you know, hey, we my family just shoveled all into this, and now all of a sudden I've got enough that I may actually be able to survive. Yeah, you know, I, I can afford, I can pay my medical bills. I can put food on my table. You know, yeah, this, which is like- this is this is literally the little guy getting his revenge against big business. Basically, I'm and I'm all for it because it's it's like, will this ever happen again? I don't know, but I like the idea of that people now know. Like, <laughs> hey, you you hate that company? Why don't you uh, look up into them and make make them broke? <laughs> why don't you go do it? Yeah, this is this is some this is some, some <laughs> weird stuff. But uh, hey, you know, float do your it. boat, do whatever, do whatever, exactly. get stonks, man. Get your yeah, stonks. Do, do, yeah, if you if you can do it, do it. If you can't do it, well, at least watch because it's one hell of a ride and one hell of a story. Oh my god, is it ever? Is it ever? This is hilarious stuff. All right, guys, thanks for talking Game Stonks. I think we are out of time, so we're going to get out of here. But before we do, first of all, thanks for stopping by and listening to the podcast. And you can always find us at Amazon Podcasts, iTunes Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Spotify, Plex, um, and wherever else you listen to your podcast. Let's check out the Outer Haven Podcast. And as always, you can stop by our site, drop a comment, you know, hit us up on Twitter, say, hey, guys, we love your show or we have a problem with your show. Or if you just want to leave a question for us to answer next time, definitely do that. We would love to interact with you. And we're always looking for guest appearances on the show. We, we like talking about games and stuff in the industry. So, hey, jump on by. We don't we don't bite. No, I'm, I bite a lot. I don't know about these two, but I, I do a lot. I'm sorry. I'm not going to lie. Oh, that's it. Let's get out of here. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>